Hi, my name is Isabella Espinosa Palomares and welcome back to another video. So today, well, I'm going to reveal a big secret about myself. A well-kept secret. I love anime. <laughs> oh my god, I am so ashamed to say... No, I'm not ashamed to say that out loud. Um, look at my earrings. Hold on, wait. Look. Just look. Demon Slayer. I promise this video will go somewhere. Just give me a second. It all started when I had a crush on Zuko from Avatar The Last Airbender. The black-haired, angry boy with awkwardness and essentially a black-haired tsundere. And then Levi <laughs> and Kageyama. And besides my obsession with that character type, I also just really like, I love the storytelling and, you know, the art style and the way just, it's very different from our Western media considering I got into Japanese anime from watching <laughs> Japanese horror films. I think I've always just really enjoyed their content that they produce. <laughs> So I really do enjoy watching anime. It's one of my favorite pastimes. It's literally quarantine. I've just been watching a whole bunch of anime and it has really helped me escape from this hell world we are currently living in. Um, but when I was younger, I didn't really watch anime. I mean, I did watch Sailor Moon, but I didn't know it was an anime when I was watching it because I had watched Avatar and that was an anime. So like, and I watched the dub version. I watched the dub version of Sailor Moon when I was little. So I didn't really watch it. And then when I got older, my friends told me, actually, that's anime. You've been watching anime this entire time. Sailor Moon is an anime. And I was like, oh, I'm so shocked. <laughs> so then they made me watch um, Attack on Titan. And that was the first anime that I knew was an anime when I was watching it that I really, really fell in love with. But there are two shows that I watched before actual anime that helped me with that little bit of a transition, including dealing with the art style and a lot of the Asian culture and themes represented in anime. So first I want to talk about those two shows, um, which are Teen Titans and as I said before, Avatar The Last Airbender. So let's get right into it. Teen Titans. Teen Titans is a 2003 animated show about, quote, a team of five teenage superheroes who save the world from many villains around their city while experiencing things normal teens face today. The main cast include Robin, Beast Boy, Cyborg, Raven, and Starfire. The show ran from 2003 to 2006 with many regarding it as a show that was cancelled too early. Many remember the series fondly as it balanced dark themes with lighthearted tones in a phenomenal way. I watched this film too long ago to remember literally any of the plot lines. Like, I don't remember the plot lines at all. But what I do remember, and what I think is the most important part of the show, are the character developments and just the lessons that the characters taught us as a whole and really remembering those characters. And on top of that, what made part of the show so rememberable, even though I don't remember the plot lines, <laughs> is the art style. And that was the first time I really saw an art style that was so different from our regular, you know, cartoons here in the West. It was the first time seeing, you know, that anime type of, you know, big eyes, kind of art style that I, I couldn't really, I still can't even really put into words what it is, but I can see it and recognize it. And the art style isn't the only thing that Teen Titans has in common with Japanese culture. The theme song for Teen Titans, there are two versions that played before the show to signify a darker theme or a lighter theme. And that was the English and Japanese version of the Teen Titans theme song. And What's significant about that is that they're, both versions are sung by the same Japanese band, Puff Ami Yui. And while I do remember the series fondly, and I thank it for sh introducing me to that art style, it was like putting your toe in the kiddie pool. And watching Avatar was more like actually 
beginning to swim before diving into the whole world of anime. Avatar The Last Airbender. Warning, there will be minimal spoilers. Avatar The Last Airbender is an animated show that ran from 2005 to 2008. The series follows the journey of Aang, the last airbender, as he tries to fulfill his role as the Avatar by bringing peace to the world during the 100-year war. Along his journey, Aang builds a group of friends known as Team Avatar, whose mission it is to help Aang learn all four elements in time to defeat the Fire Nation. The team consists of Katara, a waterbender, her brother, Sokka, Toph, an earthbender, and eventually Zuko, the banished prince of the Fire Nation. So the show was, this show, Avatar, was my true gateway into anime. And I say that for a multitude of reasons. Again, the art style was heavily pulled from, you know, Japanese anime. But there is more culture in this show that results, that is um, inspired from Asian countries. The Earth Kingdom is based off of China. The Fire Nation is based off of World War II Japan. The Water Tribe is inspired by the Inuit cultures. And the Air Nomads are inspired by Tibetan monks. As you can see, this is a really not only anime-inspired, but Asian-inspired show that was created in the West. And I know a lot of people have problems with cultural appropriation, and rightfully so, but I think this is an instance of doing cultural appropriation well in the sense that, yes, you are appropriating from that culture, but you're treating it with enough respect to make the show, the series, what you are creating, something new, unique, and something that adds to the culture that's already there, something that props it up as something that should be respected and that you should give credit to. And with the success of Avatar, of course, it got a spin-off show. Korra, which I will eventually talk about my problems with it later. I have a love-hate relationship with that show. After years of the fandom kind of dying down, when Netflix put Avatar on, Net on Netflix on their site, it revived the fandom and reminded a lot of people, like in my friend group especially, why we started watching anime in the first place is because at such a young age we watched Avatar. And the thing about that show is that it's so timeless. When I watched it as a child, I was in love with the art style, with the goofy jokes from Sokka, and you know, the awkwardness of Zuko. I mean, I had a crush on him, don't get me wrong. And I just loved all the characters. I loved seeing Katara. She was one of my favorites. Like, I loved Katara and just her motherly being. I, and Toph was the best for, she invented metal bending. She was, she was hardcore. Like, I loved all of the characters. And Suki was also great. Like, all of the characters. And Iroh. Iroh, like, Iroh. That's all I have to say. But, like, these characters were so integral in my childhood. Besides loving the characters, as you grow older, you can watch the show with a different lens. You can watch it with a more mature lens. It's themes about war. It's themes about genocide. And Aang's entire destruction of his people and how he, as a 12-year-old, had to mourn the complete genocide of the Air Nomads. And as a child, that didn't really register with me. I knew it was sad that I didn't really recognize the significance of it. But rewatching it, I, I, I felt so bad for Aang. And I think that shows that no matter what age you are, this is a show that is timeless and that will endure. And that really shows how to be respectful of a culture and still be able to incorporate those themes, though, that those cultures into your shows and still be respectful. What I'm saying about like the different age groups, even now I showed this series to my parents and they'd never watched it before. They don't really watch anime obviously, but they found enjoyment in it. And it's one of those shows that again is absolutely timeless. <sighs> so after years of not watching anime, I finally started to watch anime again in high school and it started with Attack on Titan, which is such a great show. 
Um, and honestly, one of the reasons why I avoided watching anime was because I thought it was anti. I really did. Because you know those you know those kids that you see walking around at school? The ones with the suggestive sweaters? The, the, the suggestive sweaters? I don't know what other way to describe it. But yeah, I thought all of the anime was that. And of course there are anime that are like that. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It's not like the entire anime genre is like that. You can't even really call it a genre. It's like saying, American TV is like this, when there's a million genres within American TV. Like, it's, it's more than that. Regardless of what you think, I think it's a whole new medium that anybody can explore, anybody can find something that they really like. There's anime for kids, there's anime, you know, for older people like Attack on Titan. It's a lot more gory, a lot more gruesome, and then there's like more childish ones like Sailor Moon, and there's like some stuff in the middle. But all in all, I think we need to take a page out of, you know, Japan's book because the American film industry is dying. And I say that with the utmost respect. We are dying in the sense that, just look at Disney as an example. They have an entire monopoly on oh, the film industry. Not an entire monopoly, but a very big monopoly on the film industry. And look at what they're creating. Nothing. They're creating remakes upon remakes, live action remakes of their classic films. They completely destroy the Star Wars trilogy and they're just not really creating every, anything anymore. There's nothing really creative going on in that company. And we have a million Marvel movies that, yeah, one of them out of 20 may be good, but we're just getting sequels upon sequels upon sequels upon sequels and it's very annoying it almost feels like our goal as filmmakers is no longer to be creative but simply to make money and i think we can make movies that make money and make them creative look at demon slayer demon slayer it is literally making so much money right now and still being creative. American filmmakers just don't want to take a chance on anything anymore. And that's why other countries are not afraid. They're making money. Like Japan, they can make money and still be creative. The second thing that constrains Americans is the... And I know I'm going on a whole rant here. But it ties in. We have so many rules around film that we have to follow, and other countries aren't afraid to break those rules in their media. And so, a lot of people are becoming more interested in anime. Because it offers something that American movies don't. American movies no longer provide us with creativity. They just don't. And that's the sad fact of the matter, but it's true. I think, as Americans and as aspiring filmmakers, we can look to foreign media as inspiration to revive our own film industry. Hollywood is a sinking ship. All they produce is garbage at this point. And I think as young creative filmmakers in this economy, in the world that we are in right now, we can learn how to be creative from foreign media and revive ourselves. But hey, what do I know? I'm just a college film student overanalyzing everything. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you don't like this video, tell me why in the comments. Engagement is engagement. I have been the amazing, incredible, intelligent Isabella Adamari Espinosa. Thank you and good night.